<laughs> Sometimes you keep that in and it makes you look really authentic. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of season two of the Sunday matinees. Uh, we are recording this on December 4th. Is it today the 4th? I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have here my friend Steve Hefter, uh, also goes by St. Even. And a long time ago, he used to go by Chef of Off when he was with his <laughs> band, which was a long, complicated acronym. So, um, so yeah. Before we play any music here, do you wanna do you wanna introduce yourself to the nice folks? <laughs> Gosh, um, sure. This uh, is weird without anybody actually in the room, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> weird even if people were in the room. Um, well, yeah, I, I guess I've been playing music for a really long time. I think we met probably almost 20, 15 years, 16 years ago. 2007, I think. Yeah. Or 2006, somewhere around there. Yeah. And back then I was playing um, more frequently in Baltimore. Um, and then I moved to Oregon, played a lot out there, and um, been back in Baltimore for five years and um, just mostly cooking up stuff at my house these days um but yeah fun to uh have an opportunity to play with someone else <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just a little personal connection so steve's roommate uh a long time ago was chris freeland who is our engineer and co-producer on all of the midway fair albums and uh uh, the keyboardist on the first Midway Fair album, Mike Ward, was went to went to play in Steve's band when I couldn't sing for a while because I I uh, I injured my throat. That was my excuse at any rate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna start off with a song called Pirate AM Waves, and this was a um, I don't know. I I've. I feel like spiritually it has something in common with some of the themes that, that you write about, but also I just like the song. <laughs> Sleep on the gravel like you planned Or in the back seat when you can Watching as the stars like birds in a V Set and finally disappear But if you wander then you'll see Those who disappear are free But I'll be damned if they couldn't be saved Pirate AM waves And in a little church on 35 They sit and they pray for afterlife and What you call the endless day by day Called a different word for pain but if you wander, then you'll see Those who disappear are free But I'll be damned if they couldn't be saved Hearing pirate AM waves Somewhere near nowhere in free will Fighting through static and still Somewhere in the sea of amber waves of grain Sings pirate AM waves But if you wander then you'll see Though Disappear are free, and I'll be damned 
if they couldn't be saved Hearing proud and waves And I'll be damned if they couldn't be saved Hearing proud and waves I have no idea what you're going to start with either. <laughs> we practiced some of the songs ahead of time, but we didn't talk about song order. <laughs> didn't, yeah. Oh, maybe I'll do... Um, uh, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> set list uh do you do you know the names of the songs i'm playing i i have the <laughs> i could pull up the text <laughs> um so yeah. i know yeah. uh, with newer songs i come up with like um you know uh uh just kind of stand in titles and then <laughs> and then i can't remember them sometimes because they're just you know the the title just to save the thing on i see on yeah. logic with well um, what's it about um that's a good question that i i'm not sure the answer to either <laughs> um maybe i'll let it speak for itself maybe can i can i attempt to talk about it after i play yeah it? maybe I'll, I'll refresh my memory as to both what it's called <laughs> and what it's about while i play it that's that sounds like a plan okay all right, all right. <laughs> Send that one to me as Sea of Sunrise or, or Sea Sunrise. Sea at Sunrise. Sea at Sunrise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, gosh, I don't know what it's about. I, I sometimes... Where were you when you wrote it? I was at home. Okay. Um, was this was this like during the last couple of years or is this one during the last couple of months? Okay. Yeah. Um, 
I think a lot of, uh, you know, lately, like, uh, uh, and trying to write songs, it's just kind of like, um, going through periods of time where there aren't necessarily specific things to write about. So it's, it's almost just kind of like, um, um, it's like the, the brain's version of like cutouts, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's sculpting more than like writing with like intent. Um, but yeah, I songwriting is just kind of something I, I think I do like, that's almost like whittling sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it falls so into like, that category. When you say, when you say whittling, so I, I have a friend who, who does like the cut up thing every once in a while, like. Like, I'm always interested in people who think about words in a completely different way than I do. Mm-hmm. Like, I think about words as, as in, like, pretty much a purely narrative narrative framework. I, like, like, I have tried writing um, very abstract stuff before, and it's... It's never, it's never successful. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I don't want to pretend that, oh, it could have been better. It was just, there were things I've released that I should not have <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because they didn't come out. They didn't come out the way they should have. But, um, but like, I mean, do you, do you have a narrative that you're thinking of or do you have like an, an image in mind or? I don't, th- I don't, I mean, I think with that song, I think I couldn't sleep. You know, okay. and I think so. That's probably where it starts, and then beyond that, I mean, it's not literal cutouts where I'm, you know, words and I, where I'm just throwing words and ideas into a blender. But it's it's it is sort of like a, a whittling process where it's like I, writing a song is like it makes me feel better, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's what I want to do with my time. And also, I I mentioned to you earlier, it's like I'm really enjoying learning how to record myself properly, and so. If I don't have a song, then I, I, I can't do it the way I want to do it. I, I want to record something that's like the full expression, you know, like working on playing instruments and writing songs. So it's, yeah, it's not the traditional where it's like you're feeling love or loss or, or, or those songs make more sense. They're, but you don't, sometimes I just want to write a song and <laughs> <laughs> that's not all that's not there. Cool. Um, I do want to. I do want to talk about your recording process. I mean, or really, also your recordings in general, because because I, I feel like you playing nylon string guitar <laughs> in this situation doesn't doesn't really prepare people for for what they might hear on a recording necessarily. So I I do want to talk about that later. But um, but I'll wait until you're. I'll wait until one of the other songs you're going to play because um, it has a lot more of of what I want to talk about in the, in the recording. And also Eldorado frame was released, right? Was, mm-hmm. No, no, just a no. Okay. Home, home okay. Recording. I thought that might've been on the same even record, but okay. Um, the next thing I have on my set list is actually, is actually just if, oh, yeah. if you want to hop on the drums. Sure. Yeah. I, I could have, I could have simplified things and, and, you know, but it would have been a lot of really quiet songs in a row. <laughs> So this is a Midway Fair song, and we released it on our most recent record, A Habit of Fear. But I wrote it in 2013 after reading some stories about people who had traumatic brain injuries. And, um, I mean, Phineas Gage is like the really famous one where he like had a railroad spike through his head, but... but um, but I read, I was reading one where, where some people would have trauma and they'd forget how to speak a language that they had spoken most of their lives. So like, like people who would, it, like English might not have been their first language, but it was their only language since they were like five and they, they would forget how to speak English and start speaking German or, or something that they had learned, um, when they were children. Um, uh, the, uh. The name of the song "Dislinguini" would mean um, a mangling of language or something if it were a real word, but it's not a real word. 
nor is it a real condition where, where someone starts speaking a made up language and thinks that they're actually speaking like something that is communicable to the other people in their lives. But this is narrated by a younger brother whose um, older brother is, exp is, is going through this and he's lost the ability to communicate with his older brother and isn't, is feeling pretty bad about it. Shivered unconscious in the summer heat And your shirt clung close to your chest Wrinkled hands and black and feet We took you home south to Tennessee It was days before you awakened Indignantly shaking and asking for our mother even though Now you spoke a different language Born inside your twisted ribcage You couldn't understand a single word And you taught us your new words for salt and beef You asked for something for me to hand to you But I couldn't understand you And your crying that night kept me from sleep When the neurologist examined you she said maybe in a year or two Though she said maybe it would be a little less So our conversations vanished Cause all I spoke was English And I missed you more than you could ever guess Saying something unpleasant And I was mad because I didn't have the right to be rude And that day you gave Gail flowers Tasted bitter and sour Everyone who's ever comprehended you Mostly I remember Mostly I remember Mostly I remember In the first snow in December You pushed me from the top of the hill When I fell and you said sorry And I knew that you said sorry First, I knew what it means to understand
I'm always impressed by people who can just do a drum part. <laughs> <laughs> How many of your records did you play drums on? None. None? None? Well, on the new new stuff I'm working on. Okay. I I just started learning drums um uh past year and a half. Oh, really? All mm -hmm. right. Another another pandemic project drummer. Yeah. Nice. But but I I have been obsessive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> Kept catching up on lost time. That's amazing. Yeah, um Chris Freeland was like, I asked Chris Freeland a question about it, and he was like, oh my god, are you learning drums? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that's his main instrument. But, mm -hmm. he, but he, I mean, he was, he's right. Like, it's a really, it's a really great tool as a songwriter. It's like, it's oh, like, yeah. oh, the things that I, the things that I can do now that I couldn't program. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or just the ability to hit a cymbal, like, anywhere that isn't one of two places. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, also just the thinking about um song structure like in a in a new evolved way like yeah just like i didn't i drums were just magic to me i was like well they'll do the magic thing <laughs> and i i just you know i knew if i heard something that like didn't work but i really probably didn't in most other realms of music like with recording and songwriting i could probably speak the language of but with a drummer, I'd just be like, you know, just do the, the cool thing that you do, you know, do the thing that sounds amazing, <laughs> make your black magic back there, you know, but yeah. now it's like, I, at least I'm understanding it. I don't think I'm good, but I, but I am getting to understand it. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, like, it's, it's nice to be able to just hop on the kit and show somebody the part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, totally. Like it's very efficient <laughs> from a practicing standpoint. <laughs> totally. What you got? Uh, let's see. Um, well, do you want to jump on one? Um, sure. Okay. Guitar. Uh, do, should we do, um, should we do, uh, uh, Eldorado frame? Yeah. That's the car, right? Not the city. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You could put a city on, up on cinder blocks. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like that image. I think that's cool. It's no capo. Firing car, got a 
that drops a cigarette Isn't it a shooting star? It's the love of a past life The end of the bar Whose eyes betray she's forgot my name But recognizes my scar song thank you man yeah so yeah i wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about your recording style and oh, okay um so i i i used the word experimental when i wrote up the the description <laughs> for this for the show and um and i mean i i know that's hardly a you know unique <laughs> observation i i'm i'm pretty sure you fully embrace the experimental label yes. right yeah well so if, if you say it it sounds good to me <laughs> well i don't know i mean <laughs> i would take it as a compliment but um but yeah i mean like like there's there's some things where it's like you you can apply the word experimental to to a piece of music because someone will i don't know invent new sounds so like Bonnie Vera has done albums where like they had to invent a piece of machinery for his vocal processing. Right, right, right. And, um, or, or maybe like a long time ago when, when people were first creating synths and, and, and other sorts of, uh, um, modular systems exper it would be experimental because they, they literally didn't know what sounds they were necessarily going to get out when they started, when they started with. But, but in your case, like, like, I, I feel like you um, have a million ideas for the ways you can present the song, and and so listening to like so listening to your tracks, it nothing ever gets boring. It's it's like but it's like a two minute song, and I'm like and and in this case, this song might be two and a half minutes on the recording, yeah. and yeah. and. There are more sounds in that than I would think to use in in several. Yeah. And I mean I, I guess I guess my question is like I, I don't want it to sound like I'm like I'm in some way insinuating that, that you're indecisive about your art. <laughs> so so I, I, I did kind of want to ask though, like like does that come from does that come from um just a desire to keep things as different as possible throughout the song for the listener or is mm. it or is it also just something where at, at any given point in the song the presentation might need to change because of because of something in the song itself yeah. or i don't know i guess I, I um with that song i'm I was just trying to think about the um, arrangement on it, and I know that there's like um you know a uh, slide guitar and um uh you know and um i don't know i i i i i do think um maybe maybe it's more because I have less to work with sometimes mm -hmm. so i think if you're playing in a band um then you you know what your arrangement's going to be and it's 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 predetermined by your collaborative partners right and but then if you're working by yourself i think you're you're not you're you're you're, you're coming into it with no expectation and so um you have to kind of fill all those gaps that have that are left by not having a band, right? You have to have, um, and I want to hear, um, I want to hear an arrangement that a five piece or six piece band would be able to play. And as one person trying to 
fill th those gaps probably will make anything sound like an experimental record, I guess. I don't know. I, yeah, it's a good question and a bad answer, I think. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I, I have some of the same problems. You know, I have more, I have more songs than I can reasonably ask my band to record with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I tend to be much more... I, te I tend to be much more... Sometimes I will come up with a new sound that I want to use, but then I'll, I'll basically use it in the song. And like, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. And I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm just trying to get some insight on like, how do you get good at that? <laughs> cause, yeah, I don't know. Cause it, it's, yeah. and I mean, I mean, I know that this is more common in your more recent work than it was a long time ago, but even, even a long time ago, like you would, I, I remember one show where actually it might be the show where I met you, where you had this little tiny keyboard Mm hmm and Mini um chord. yeah and but but mike ward was playing piano with you and and at one point you just walked over to the piano and you started playing another piano part and mike had no idea that was going to happen and it was and it was it was this <laughs> it was this thing that some people some people to be very cynical would do that intentionally with the idea of um doing something interesting <laughs> mm -hmm. and but it was a very i mean it was definitely a very genuine moment <laughs> and yeah. and it was and i i feel like i feel like that's kind of been my impression of of how you present your songs in general is that um is that very often they'll just be this new element and it's only in the song for a very brief period of time and even if some and even if something else has to go away for it it's 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 very it's very kind to us listeners with short attention cool. spans. Well, I think I have a short attention span, so I'm I'm in the same boat. And uh, yeah, I I did have one thought to to your question though. Is like I think for me the like we we're talking about writing a song where it's like maybe there isn't a clear inspiration. Um, I mean, to me, part of the process is definitely um, arrangement. Like that's that's like what I have some one of the things I have the most fun doing. So I just I want excuses to you know, to push that constantly. That's that's why I'm recording is partially to arrange. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's probably as much a part of it as like having the song to begin with. Awesome. Um I was wondering if you might if you mentioned you might play electric oh, on, yeah, yeah, sure. on one of my songs. Yeah. Um Do you mind throwing this one over you don't, the wall? Or you don't have to play electric of course, but because... I think I think this thing's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like have at it. Like I don't see I don't see very many uh nylon string guitars with a radius fretboard like this. Mm -hmm. Your old one was just a straight classical though, right? Like it was It was a classical with electronics in it and it had yeah. a cutoff. This one's nicer. <laughs> Set that there. Uh, so this song is A Lion Looks Down from the Mountain. And I did play this in the matinees last year. I mean, I'm not doing the thing where I don't repeat myself. Last year, I didn't repeat myself for like months in a row. And I was doing them every week. And, you know, you, at some point, you start scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that makes sense. But I don't know. I didn't want to bore the the five or ten people that were watching every week. <laughs> um, but I I I did this one last year, and I wrote it during fall. I did it the week I wrote it, because I was like I was like oh I kind of like this one. Um, and I had a I had some very nice compliments from a song from a local songwriter that I that I admire but, about it. But I think it's great too. Uh, yeah, and someone someone said it was it, it's a song about speaking for things that can't speak for themselves. Mm. But really, this was February this year. That was basically the point where the isolation from the pandemic finally got to me. Like there we go. Hopefully that won't happen too often. Yeah. Or in the middle of a song. 
All right. Um, but yeah, here we go. The lion looks down from the mountain. down from the mountain yawns and runs a paw across her ear from a sleep as deep as a canyon the only one for hundreds of years she remembers the still of the prairie taste of a deer from the plains fear of men and trucks and of horses and the smell of the pride and their names well, she was carved out of granite I wonder should she still be a stone a stone to stave off the panic, the panic of being alone. I always thought you were a very underrated guitarist. Oh, I mean, thanks, I know, man. I know, having George in your band will, <laughs> will pretty, kind of. <laughs> he's pretty good. He actually plays on the um, um, 
We should do that next since we're talking about it. He he he's the guy playing guitars on um backwards. Oh okay, okay, yeah, yeah. He's he's better than me at guitar <laughs> for sure. He's really good. Trade. All right. Find my backwards guitar. <laughs> <laughs> This th this one definitely has more of a through line and a concept. I mean, I just thought it was funny to <laughs> write, write a song called Backwards Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Did you? Yeah. So when you wrote it, did you did you write it in order and then flip it around, or did you? I don't know. I think I think that I I think that I probably was just kind of like messing around, and I and I had maybe like the line like start at the end, and then I want and I was like you know then it, one thing led to another. I think yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I I do like um I like back mask backwards masking. I think it's, I think it's great. <laughs> I was I was actually I was actually um pleasantly surprised that you didn't just play the lines backwards in the recording but you, I mean I realize you're not actually like like singing exactly what it would sound like if it were backwards I just thought it was funny that that you that I think you on one of them the I word. did Oh you do okay on one of them I, but it it, yeah. did, it almost sounds worse than when I'm faking it Yeah, yeah. so I just like okay. It was it was cleverer to fake it mm -hmm. I, I thought <laughs> well thank you i appreciate it. I, I feel like it was the less obvious choice <laughs> all right cool glad glad it worked <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to this because I want to do my cover. Okay. Do you mind? Do you mind tossing my? Well, I'm, I'm going to gently. Thank you. <laughs> Not toss. 
Yes, yes, I appreciate. I appreciate you not um, taking a little. Were you gonna sing on this? Cause nah, I don't think so. Okay. I don't really, I don't know it too well. Right. So yeah, um, we really didn't do any covers last year because I wasn't sure how how YouTube would act oh, about right, them, right, right, right. you know. Um, but uh, I I was terribly amused that <laughs> that I could not tell that the one you picked as a cover was a cover. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is a replacement song, and it's a pretty good one. DJs at one hundred three one said that he he has broken multiple studio monitors playing that song too loud. Oh, really? <laughs> it's hilarious. It's such it's a, a good one. one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I guess I can hand the guitar back to you unless you're going to play piano. <laughs> trying to think what else I got. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I'd love for you event eventually to play mandolin on this. Oh. Yeah, I um, it's back in the closet. Yeah, but... down the road, down the road. Yeah. Future mandolin. Future, Future mandolin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that like a time machine mandolin? Or... That's right. Yeah. Okay. Or or it's like a guy who plays a mandolin. That's like a little computer mandolin. Oh, oh sweet. Like Future Man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. 
heart is an airplane that's been grounded since 1999. The year of the rabbit and the cat and the. Let me, let me try this again. <laughs> You're gonna run. Okay. I wonder if I have to do that. <laughs> you might have to do that. Alright, one more, one more go at this. My heart is an airplane. It's been grounded since 1999. The year the rabbit and the cat and the mouse deer. Dragon, it emerged from the earth, spitting fire in the year of the number three, and the lilies of the valley and the mouse deer. Can a broken heart ever set sail in a wake of the year of the whale? <clears throat> now the tide. Swims towards the land beneath the heavenly stalk and earthly branch in the year of the number zero and the anti hero dressed in black. I almost got it. <laughs> Chord at the end. <clears throat> That's brand. I just that's a brand new one, but I think it would be really neat to have you play mandolin on. Yeah, I mean, I. This reminds me that we should probably mention some of your uh, some of your influences on on the, you know, right now because that one I, that <laughs> one I feel it's like. It sounds very folky, especially like the recording you sent me, but it's also like I hear that and I'm like I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> like, like yeah yeah yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> something like when I, when I was thinking about that song, there's some kind of like a, a little bit of, um, I don't know, maybe a little like modest mouse in there and mm -hmm. some just kind of off the beaten path, folky stuff. Um, uh, <clears throat> also I was reading that Philip Dick novel that I mentioned to you and it, it the, the, I was just getting really into the um, the uh, I Ching and the um, I don't know. I just it's like it's again. It's just kind of like what, the the just um, <laughs> brain shit storm. You know? <laughs> um, um, I mean, I don't know, but like, so what is a mouse deer? I have no idea. Oh, but okay. but it's apparently um, is it a real thing? It is a real okay, thing. Okay. It's it's uh, every you know every year is like uh, in the zodiac calendar is like associated okay. with multiple animals. Oh, I see. Some okay. of them are you know rabbits and cats, and yeah. some of them are mouse deer animals that I don't know what they are, but they sound cool. I gotcha. Okay. And 1999 actually was like the year of the mouse deer. Mm -hmm. I think so. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly wasn't sure if it was a real animal or if it was like, a, I don't know, a, a twisting of the word dormouse or something, you know? It's, no, it's a thing, apparently. That's neat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the uh, artist who does a lot of the, a lot of like our cover art and, and poster art has, a, has an ongoing series where she's painting all of the, uh, all of the, uh, well, not really painting, but um, they're linoleum prints for, the animals in the in the zodiac in the Chinese oh, zodiac, um, 
yeah we used uh we used the year of the bull for for one of our posters and the year of the snake for another one mm -hmm. yeah i i didn't know that there were multiple animals associated with it though that's i also didn't know that there was like um it's not just multiple animals but it's also like multiple numbers multiple colors multiple um um you know there's the year of the wood year of yeah, I mean, there's so many things, so many simultaneous things associated with it. Also, in different cultures that have similar systems, they may have different things in the same year. Hmm. Well, I have come to my last song. Okay. So, you got you got four minutes to remember what your fourth one was. I know what my fourth. I know what the last oh. one is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I can focus on your song instead. It's a song about the apartment that I lived in when we first met. <laughs> um, so I was living on an, in an apartment on 25th Street in Baltimore, and the heat was broken in the winter, and there was no air conditioning. But um, it was the third floor. It was a third floor walk up of a really old row house. Um, I say really old, but like maybe 1880s. Maybe 1930s, some somewhere in that era, but um, but it had a huge front room and these giant, giant windows in the front. And if you opened the kitchen window all the way in the back of the apartment, and it had it had like a staircase running up through the middle of the apartment, which was weird. It was joined by a closet, but but you could open you could open the doors to the stairwell. And the door into the kitchen all the way in the back, and then open those giant the giant windows on the on the south side of the building that that looked out over downtown, and and get it like a wind tunnel going. So it was really nice in the summer, but um, but also Twenty uh, Sixth Street has a train track running running in a tunnel, like like pretty much in the alley behind where the apartment was. So um, yeah, it had you know, and all hours of the night. I mean. <laughs> you get a train whistle. So um it never bothered me, but then Lexa moved in and and I had to get a I had to get air conditioning for the for the bedroom. Um somehow somehow it just never bothered me and I have no idea. You know, I, I mean I realize I realize as I've get as I've gotten older I've probably um become accustomed to creature comforts that I did not have when I was younger. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. So, so, so 2022 John can't imagine how 20, how 27 John like could live without air conditioning. But, oh yeah. Yeah. I can but, relate to that. But I mean, I didn't really have it when I was a kid either. So I don't know. Really. I'll just, uh, I guess we all just turn into weaker people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> I think that's accurate. Um, I actually have some friends in Baltimore that cover this, which is neat. Cool. Um, they do it very differently, which annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> and I when I lie away. There's a train whistle blown outside my door And now when I lie awake There's a train whistle blown outside my door I Try to shut out the sound But that train whistle's running underneath my floor Little bird on the fence at 26 singing a lonesome song. A little bird on the fence at 26 singing a lonesome song. When that train rumbles by, well, the little bird will pick up and move along.
gets so hot in summer Thinkling by the wind to come on by I get so hot in the summer Thinkling by the wind to come on by If the wind can't stop by Well, the breeze from that train will suit me fine Now when I lie awake There's a train whistle blowing outside my door Now when I lie awake There's a train whistle blowing outside my door Try to shut out the sound, but that train whistle's running underneath my floor. Nice pick. Thanks. Man, I, I was doing the I was doing the thing where you just kind of wave your guitar around. I, I don't know. <laughs> I do it every once in a while, and I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what possesses guitarists to do that, like, like this thing. They, Looks cool. I, I, I guess. I, 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 maybe it makes us feel better. It feels like we're actually doing something, even when we're not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> no, I just, I just have to point it out because I was making fun of classical guitarists for, for, the, like I see people do this, this oh, yeah. thing with, with their vibrato. Mm -hmm. on, on steel string guitars, and I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done that a lot, and doesn't do any, doesn't do anything. <laughs> but maybe it makes people feel better. Yeah, you know, I mean, feeling good is 99 percent of playing music. So, That's right. especially rock and roll. I mean, it's all ethos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, feeling good, you're doing it right. Well, John, thank you for having me. Um, thank you so I, much for joining me. This yeah. was this was fantastic. I'm 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 so glad you actually saw the Facebook post when I was recruiting people. Cause, yeah, because well, I, I forgot to. I think you told me about it because I reached out to you um, just generally, just like hey, because I saw you've been playing shows and I was like hey, looks like you're doing stuff. And then yeah, I, I, I didn't. It. I I actually had forgotten that you moved back to Baltimore. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. like that was the other thing. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had me. Um, and it's been, because it's been like such a good opportunity to work up these songs, you know, to, to play them in front of another human being. <laughs> um. Thing about. 
Such a heart Woken by the heart Light fading Climb the walls all night Fell from such a high Thank you so much, Steve. Um, yeah. This is, this has been fantastic. I I mean I've missed seeing you play for sure. <laughs> and oh yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm glad you're I'm glad you're uh back to putting some music out there too. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying your new record, so yeah. Mutual Admiration Club. Thanks. Um so I know I know you've got a St. Even page like is there anywhere else that people can find you? Mm. <laughs> there's like a yeah i mean that's probably i mean i've got you know just music on the the typical stuff band camps spotify and all that stuff that's all you know um i um i have like a website but i haven't really messed with it too much recently okay so yeah awesome yeah um thank you for watching so Two weeks, from, uh, one week from the air date of this, and two weeks from the day we're recording this. Um, the next episode will feature me and my friend Rick doing Celtic music um, with our our new band, uh, Thistlebrook Band. Um, Tolkien geeks can go ahead and figure out where that comes from. <laughs> um, but um, here's a hint: hobbits. Okay, so, um, and then in January, I will have uh, Jules Bland, a very good songwriter from from D.C., also a very good song interpreter. He plays tremendously transformed covers of pop songs, um, usually usually the down-tempo thing, but he does it very well, and also another Knopfler fan, so, uh, so very much a fan of his guitar playing, and Lynn Hollyfield will... Be here. I'm not sure if she'll be solo or if she's bringing if she's bringing some some measure of the band, but I'll find out. <laughs> so, um, uh, if you're watching this later, and you know, please uh, check out the other episodes, and I will see you in another week. Have a good one.